Hello there. Welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now today you join me in the second of a two video series which I've been producing in answer to a question from one of my patrons, Matthew, who asked me, what brands would you use to create your ideal outfit from head to toe? You can only use each brand once in each outfit. So, and I've done an affordable version and a luxury version. And that's what I'm doing today. The luxury version of the items from head to toe, what I'm going to curate my perfect outfit and the brands which I've used to do so. So I'm gonna start from the ground up. And because, as I said in the earlier video, when I talked about affordable items, the footwear is where you should be putting a lot of the money in your outfit because your shoes, foundation of the outfit, is what people look at first. If you've got cheap plastic cemented sole shoes on, it's gonna cast a negative light on the other items you're wearing. But if you've got good shoes on and a cheap suit, you're going to look smart. So I'm putting a lot of money into my shoes on this occasion. I've gone to British brand Gaziano and Girling. Now they're not one of the big, long heritage traditional brands who've been around for 150 years. Gaziano and Girling, I think they've been around about 30 years, maybe even less than that. They've got a shop on um, Savile Row now, and their shoes are, to me, just a little touch of contemporaneous to them, which I find a little bit more alluring than some of those really old traditional shoes that I often see from brands such as Crockett and Jones and Church and so on. The ones I've gone for here today, now my, uh, where are they? So I've gone for the Gaziano and Girling Highland Semi Brogues in a vintage Rioja colored leather. And these are very, very attractive. What I like about them is, well, two things really, the color. Obviously, it's very charming color. It is obviously uh, vintage Rioja, it, it's burgundy, let's call it as it is. But that color is something I can see being very uh, easily wearable across a wide range of my clothing. I like the design of these shoes as well. Look at that suspiciously square toe. Very, very indicative of high quality when you see men's footwear like this. And I do love with that semi-brogue where the toe cap has gone into a little sort of chevron, a swoosh, if you want to call it that, instead of the traditional straight across the toe cap. I think that just adds a bit of art deco elegance to these shoes. Lots of the broguing again around the extremities of the shoe as you can see, but these I think are absolutely glorious. They should be, they are 1,300 British pounds, which sounds a lot of money, but, all right, staying with shoes just for one more moment, staying with the same brand. If money was no option here, which unfortunately I am being kind of limited, uh, a similar type of shoe, also by Gaziano and Girling, and this is a similar shoe from the Optimo range, right, so this is uh, made to measure in effect, so a custom made shoe, uh, but these cost 3,000 British pounds. So if I've really won the lottery, right, this is where I'd go. More than twice the price of those Highland Semi Brogues. A very similar shoe, but made to a higher specification. So it just goes to show, you know, if money were no option, there's always another step up you can go. So staying with the footwear, um, as I did in the last video, funnily enough, there's one item which is similar to both socks, the, hos the hosiery. For me, I don't care if I've got a pile of money, it's still going to be Corgi socks from the factory, which I visited myself, had a factory tour earlier in the year. Corgi socks, they hold the Royal Warrant. The socks are good enough for His Majesty King Charles. They're good enough for me, and they're only about 17 pounds 50 per pair. So I put them in my affordable outfit. I'm putting them in my luxury outfit too. So, you know, staying good with the shoes. Now I'm going to move up the body and in my affordable outfit I went for a trouser blazer combination but today I'm going for a suit combo because I'm going to number 10 Savile Row, Dej and Skinner and I'm going to buy myself a suit. Now if I'm going to go full-on lottery winner, right? I could go bespoke, which would be around about 6,000 British pounds for an entry-level suit from Dej and Skinner. However, I'm going to be a little bit frugal here. I'm going to nail it back. I'm just going to buy one of their off-the-rack suits, and I've gone for a navy suit. Notch lapel, single-breasted, two-button, vented back, in quite 
a very versatile navy colour, as you can see. And trousers, got tabs on them so you don't have to wear a belt, so it's a good, stylish type of suit. This is a suit which can be worn across the widest uh, sort of variety of social, business, formal functions. Um, opposed to the 6,000 full bespoke price, this price, 1,200 pounds off the rack. So from that point of view, you get quite a good deal. Now, off the rack, you still get uh, horsehair and alpaca padding, half padding in these though, but still a fantastic suit at, I wouldn't say it's an approachable price, but it's still a luxury price, 1,200 pounds. The shirt, which I'm pairing with this outfit, I'm gonna go for a blue shirt, right? I went for a blue shirt, <coughs> excuse me. I went for a blue shirt with my um, affordable option, but in my luxury option, blue shirts, just so very practical. However, instead of going with Charles Tewitt, as I did in my affordable, I'm now going down German Street in London, in St. James's area of London, and I'm going into Turnbull and Asser. Royal Warrant Holders, provider of shirts for His Majesty the King. And the option I'm going for today though, is not any old shirt, because I've won the lottery, right? I can afford it. I am going for Turnbull and Asser's Dr. No shirt from their James Bond collection. Because Turnbull and Asser, wonderful shirt manufacturer as they are, they're probably very well known for providing the shirts for the James Bond uh, movie franchise. From the very first film, Dr. No, right up to the very latest films, you'll see James Bond wearing Turnbull and Asser. And this particular shirt, the Dr. No shirt, really came to prominence because it introduced a certain type of cuff which has become legendary in the men's shirt world. But what we have here is a pale blue Indian Sea Island cotton shirt. And those cuffs they're the famous cocktail cuff or the turnback cuff, which has become a signature item for Turnbull and Asser and particularly these Bond shirts. Now, Sea Island cotton is not cheap, neither is this very special shirt. It will set you back £595, so the best part of £600. But what you get here is a very special shirt with a very special heritage as worn by Sean Connery in Dr. No and pretty much all of the James Bonds ever since. So great heritage in the shirt that you're wearing, great conversation piece as well, and a marvelous, you know, imagine that soft sea island cotton against your skin. I think it's worth the investment. So there we go. Now we're moving on to the accessories. And the accessory I'm going for is a tie. Now with my affordable options, I had to go cheap. In fact, I went to AliExpress. I feel ashamed to have, have to have done that, but I wanted to save money. Now I'm a lottery winner, I can afford anything I want. And I'm making my way to Drake's, all right? Now, in fact, it's a, we're quite fortunate because Drake's is next door to um, Deej and Skinner, right? So next door shop on Savile Row. And I'm gonna go for a madder silk tie. Now, what's madder silk? Sometimes it's called ancient madder. It's a certain type of silk which has a certain texture and a finish to it, which is absolutely beautiful, but very expensive. Now, I don't own a madder silk tie. I would love to. Anybody out there who wants to send me a madder silk tie for a review, I'm open to it happening. Because madder silk is a certain type of tie. The silk is created in a certain way. The, the silk is quite heavy and it has a certain feel to it. Um, it's been described as a chalky feel, like a matte feel to it. Uh, and it has a distinctive appearance and feel. And the reason why it has a distinctive appearance, because it has this matte finish, it absorbs light rather than reflecting light. So with normal silk, obviously the light hits it and it's reflected away, a bit of a shine. But with madder silk being uh, sort of a matte in its, and chalky in its appearance, it absorbs the light. So it gives it a totally different look. I think it's quite unique and it really suits multicolored uh, materials. Now I've picked out this particular paisley pattern, which I found very attractive. Attractive also means expensive. So a single tie um, from Drake's is 150 British pounds. But I think this is an investment in something which will elevate the outfit. You've gone the whole hog on the suit and the shoes and the shirt. You need a tie, which is comparative. 
And there we go. So there is Drake's. Not an old company, not a heritage company. It's only been around, well, I don't know actually. I think it's probably got a few years under its belt. But still, it's a brand which um, I think carries a lot of clout in the men's style world. Now, staying with those accessories, as a lotto winner, I'm going to splash out because in my affordable video, I actually um, suggested using just a handkerchief to save money on the pocket square or repurposing a bit of material from around the house and wearing it as a pocket square. But on this occasion, I'm going to Rampley & Co, right, because money's no option now, I'm a lotto winner. I'm going to Rampley & Co, who have a reputation for making the most amazing pocket squares out of works of art, prints of works of art. They often have historic, um, you know, battles or uh, sort of uh, historic uh, moments from history, and they create a pocket square around that situation. But there's one I really have always been attracted to, and that is this pocket square here, which is called The Spark, because obviously it's a spark, somebody's lighting a cigarette for somebody else. This is a pocket square, believe it or not, and it costs 145 British pounds. So a lot of money for a very fancy pocket square, but you can just imagine those colors, those rich, beautiful pastel colors poking out of the pocket, pocket of that wonderful Dejan Skinner suit made or purchased next door, in fact, on Savile Row. So I think that's an absolute beauty. Loads of different patterns with Rampley & Co, but this one has always attracted me. It's a classic. Now, I'm staying with my accessories, and I'm gonna really throw it all out now, all right? Because in my uh, affordable version, I went for a, an Orient Bambino wristwatch, about 250 quid. I'm a lotto winner now. I know no limits when it comes to my love of wristwatches, and I've chosen a classic from the holy trinity of wristwatch manufacturers, Audemars Piguet. And I have chosen a Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Jumbo. Right, so it's one of the, uh, it's an ultra thin. And as you can see, I've gone for precious metal. This is pink gold with a slate gray dial. Now this watch is a 39 millimeter case, so it's gonna be a perfect fit for a gentleman. Why have I gone for this? Well, for a start, I make no bones about it. I'm unashamed. I absolutely love gold, all right? I love gold materials. I'm wearing a gold effect wristwatch now. It's not really gold, but it has a gold effect because I think gold, I don't know, perhaps it's the primal thing within me. I love the fact that it's a precious metal. It's on the periodic table. It will be here on this planet in perpetuity. You know, it was here when the planet was created. It was mined out of the ground. It will be here when the planet goes up in a puff of smoke, whenever that is. Gold has something of a permanence to it. It's a, a, a real elemental metal. It sort of brings out something in human beings. We love gold. And I love gold on wristwatches. And I particularly love on wristwatches rose gold or pink gold, as Audemars Piguet described this one. I like its classical elegance. I like the integrated bracelet, which is uh, the, the finishing on it, the articulation of that bracelet is exquisite in the extreme. And it's just a classic, almost sort of Art Deco style. Again, obviously with that bezel, gives the sort of appearance of the porthole of a ship. I believe that's what it was originally designed to uh, sort of uh, replicate by the designer, um, Gerald Genta, famous watch designer. But I think he nailed it with this one. Classically elegant. It's not cheap though, right? As you can probably imagine. 67,500 British pounds. It's an enormous sum of money. But hey, I won the lotto. I'm allowed these things. I'm not a car guy. I'm not going out buying expensive cars. I am going to allow myself an amazing watch. That's what I picked. So moving on, we won't linger on that because I think, you know, I've probably embarrassed myself by disclosing my fascination with fancy materials. However, I now need an overcoat because in the winter time, as stylish as I am, I need to stay warm because you know I live in a temperate climate it does get cold and I've gone for a traditional British company private white VC and they go into collaboration with various designers and here we see one of their collaboration pieces limited edition piece and it's a Donegal single breasted raglan sleeve overcoat it's made in wool it comes in two different patterns I've gone for the sort of speckled navy colored one they also do a, a sort of a gray colored one but I rather like this one I think it would go beautifully with my new Dejan Skinner suit and as you can see it's quite a 
straightforward uh, overcoat really. Braggan shoulder, so it sort of drapes around the shoulder. Uh, hidden button placket. Uh, but it comes below the knee just to the sort of length you need it to be. Got a nice big collar you can flip up. Uh, you know, imagine battened down in that with a nice warm scarf. That heron bone weave, that speckle pattern, still being a little bit different from the traditional that you'll see most men wearing. I think it is stylish, I think it is elegant, I think it's also reasonable at 1,000 British pounds. So, and Private White VC is a a company which has an amazing heritage. I believe it was founded in something like 1917 or something like that um, and you know been over, going going over a hundred years and it's called Private White VC because one of the more prominent uh, people who's been involved in the foundation and the sort of going forward of the company was a man called uh, White who was a private in the British Army who won the Victoria Cross. Uh, so lots of history there. So, um, which incidentally is the highest award for valour in the British military system. So um, quite a significant achievement and I think this overcoat is a real corker. It's a little bit different as well. It's a little bit left of centre, isn't it? You might have thought I'd have gone with one of the classic sort of Ulster style coats, but no, I've gone for something a little bit slightly non-conformist. And finally, I'm going to go totally conformist now. I'm going to top this off with a visit to Lock & Co in London. I believe it's the oldest hat maker in the world, probably. Uh, and I'm going to go with a bowler hat. All right? I'm a very simple man, really, aren't I? Or they call it the Coke hat in Lock & Co because, and they can do that because they were the company which brought us the bowler hat uh, or, the, or the Coke hat as they uh, call it themselves. The hat was created by the Bowler Brothers, hence we use the name Bowler Hat. But it's a simple, classic, elegant, practical, superb hat. I've got a bowler hat, not from Lock & Co, uh, but I th and they come in a couple of different colours. They come in black, they come in grey, and a sort of brown colour. Uh, the brown would probably be a good fit for the outfit, which I've curated here today. But if you wanted to go for something you could wear with everything, you know, the black bowler is the classic of all classics. 500 and 75 British pounds will buy you that. And it's a hat which will last you a lifetime for sure. And there we have an amazing curated outfit. Now I've gone a bit nuts on few of those items. The shoes, the watch particularly. Okay, I'm entitled to it. I'm a lotto winner. Forgive me for that. But that's what I would curate from head to toe if money were no option and I wanted a little bit of luxury, yet still something I could wear out and about in the streets and not look as if I was on my way to open the circus. So, there we go. I hope you enjoyed those two videos on the affordable options and my luxury items uh, in that curated outfit. If you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click the old subscribe button. If you want to ask me a question, do so in the comment section below or by sending me an email. You can see my email address on the screen now. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee or you can become a patron and get additional video content over on my Patreon page. And all of the information around that is in the show notes below. So, take care, curate your outfit from head to toe. It's actually good fun to sit down and pick the things you could choose if money were no option. And then when the lotto does come your way, you're ready to strike. So until the next time, take care, and I will see you again very soon.